They then took charge of Jesus. And Jesus, carrying his own cross, went out of the city to the place of the skull. Or as it was called in Hebrew, Golgotha. There, they crucified him. Along with two others. Pilate wrote out a transcription and had it fixed to the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. This notice was read by many of the people, since the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city, and the writing was in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. The chief priest came to Pilate and said, you should not have written king of the Jews. But this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate replied, what I have written, I have written. After the soldiers had finished crucifying Jesus, they divided his clothing into four shares, one for each soldier. Now his undergarment was seamless, woven in one piece from neck to hem. So they said to one another, hey, instead of tearing it, let's throw dice to see who gets it. In this way, the words of scripture was fulfilled. They shared out my clothing among them. They cast lots for my clothes. And that's exactly what the soldiers did. <laughs> Near the cross of Jesus, stood his mother. And his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clophis, and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said, Woman, this is your son. And to the disciple, this is your mother. From that moment, the disciple made a place for her in his home. After this, knowing now that everything was complete. And to fulfill the scripture perfectly, Jesus said, Now 
there was some vinegar there. And they took a sponge and soaked it in the vinegar, put it on a hyssop stick. <laughs> and put it up to his mouth. After Jesus had taken the vinegar, he said, It is accomplished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. What can anyone possibly say about Christ's crucifixion that his crucifixion doesn't say for itself? Perhaps we could briefly reflect on Jesus' final words that John records as the greatest sermon ever preached from this pulpit of his cross. Recall the first words that he spoke to his mother and the beloved disciple, woman, behold your son, behold your mother. It's amazing that in spite of Jesus' excruciating pain, 
that he had the presence of mind and the gift of love in his heart to want to care for his mother and to share his mother with his beloved disciple. It's interesting to note that even John doesn't use his name to describe himself, but says the beloved disciple because he wants everyone to see themselves there as the beloved disciple of Jesus. Even more noteworthy is the fact that he wants us to receive Mary as our spiritual mother, to help us especially when we are faced with our cross in our times of struggling or suffering. This came home to me when shortly after my surgery, when my entire right kidney was removed with a sizable tumor. And in a period of recuperation, I was very fortunate to be able to recuperate with, at my parents' home. And they were so gracious and good to me. I've learned I, there are times I wanted just to be alone and I would close my door. But those other times when I really welcomed their company and presence, I would leave the door open. And inevitably, whenever I left my door open, mom and dad would come and be with me and accompany me and pray with me. But what I remember most is how my mother would always come. And I'd already had begun this immunotherapy treatment that had caused me uh, rather high fevers and even physical tremors. And it was difficult at first as my body was trying to adjust to this, all these medicines. And she would just sit at the foot of my bed, massage my feet and my heart, and pray the rosary. And somehow there is so comforting and consoling that I was reminded of Mary and how she stood at the foot of the cross and must have given Jesus all the encouragement and the strength he needed. That is the gift of Christ to us. If you leave the door open for Mary to come to you. The second of the final words that Jesus spoke from this pulpit of his cross was very simply, I thirst. I thirst. But we'd have to ask, thirst for what? Certainly he was feeling de dehydrated. Certainly in his excruciating pain, he thirsted for some relief. But don't you suspect that his thirst was much deeper touched into his soul. All his life, he had thirsted to do God's will. And all his life, he thirsted for others to know and feel and taste the love of God. Jesus' thirst was his passion. And isn't it interesting that we would even name Jesus' suffering and death as his passion? Because truly, it was his greatest love to even give his life for us, even to go to this extent, if this is what it meant, to show us how much he loved us. What is your passion? What do you thirst for? Mother Teresa had those two words inscribed in all the convents in the, in the chapel of every one of her homes throughout the world. Underneath the cross, she put, I thirst. For these words of Christ speak to us today. And finally, the last words of Jesus on the cross is, it is accomplished as he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. What was accomplished? What was his mission? What was it that he gave up or gave over? We believe in that moment Jesus died as he had always lived, 
in a spirit of total surrender, even his arms opened up in that gesture of surrender, handing over to God everything he had, even his last breath, even the last ounce of his blood that was taken from his body. He gave it all over. And when he breathed his last, he poured out his spirit upon us all. Can you imagine what that meant, to surrender that much? We all have an invitation to experience that somewhat in our life because so many times we feel like things are taken out of our hands or we are no longer in control. You know that feeling. We all like to be in control of our life. We all like to be able to determine what we want to do. But we're being called, if we're true followers of Jesus, to surrender everything, even your wants, even your rights. Think about it, my friends. Surrender is the one lesson of the spiritual life. And it's the lesson that suffering will teach us more than anything. I believe the thing I have struggled with most is not the pain of what I deal with, but the challenge of surrender, to not knowing how long or live or what will happen or surrender, surrender, surrender. Would you be willing tonight to open your hands a little bit further, to open your heart a little bit wider, to open your mind a little bit more so that we could hand over our life to the Lord, that the Lord could hand over his life to us. Surrender. In the world, it means I give up, I lose. But in the spiritual life, it means God wins, and so do we. So let us surrender everything to him.